become a really important piece of our, our leadership training. There's almost no program we deliver that it's not included. And it was not even on my radar when I was a creative leader. It's like listening skills. Is that a skill? Um, Janet and I got it um, on our radar thanks to um, when we were planning our program, meeting with this amazing woman named Claire Hasid, who was a, a, the head of planning at Saatchi in New York at one point. And uh, she said, of course, you want to include le- listening skills in your program. Yes, it is. Poor listening skills are something that most people suffer from. Most people have a lot of room for improvement, but creative people um, are particularly guilty. Um, and I, again, count myself among them big time of walking into the room, already knowing what you want to say and almost having a mindset of whatever they say, I am, I've got my story, I'm sticking to it and I'm not leaving until I've, you know, gotten my way. And what we now know is that that is in direct conflict with working in harmony with what it is to be human. Um, We leave so many clients feeling that we are shut down, that we are not open to what they think, what they have to say, and bad things ensue. So, so often when we don't sell the idea, it wasn't because we didn't present it well enough. It's that we didn't, we were not open to actually truly listening to what was um, said in return, to what the real um, anxieties might have been around the thinking or um, the perspective that, that people really wanted to share on it. Um, so, and when people don't feel heard, whether they're clients or someone else, that goes straight to feeling disrespected. And so if you think about it that way, that, that if you're not showing all the cues of being a good listener, um, that you're really set up to look like someone who does not respect the point of view of, of someone else, bad things are going to happen. Um, so you've got that as a problem. You also have the fact that when we are so single-mindedly walking into that room with our ideas to sell and are thinking so hard about what we want to say, um, that we are going to not really be taking in everything as important information that comes back to us. So we can be so busy thinking about what our response is going to be to what, in the middle of the client saying something about what they think. Um, and, and, you know, being ready to come back at them immediately with why they're wrong, <laughs> essentially. Um, yeah, we're missing information. We're going forward with partial information. And then, you know, the next meeting, if you've got revisions based on that, can be going off the rails because we didn't even hear clearly what was said to us as fundamental, you know, information to respond to smartly. So um, it is a big, it is a big deal. I feel like I'm a recovering listener, you know, bad listener. I think it's, it's something you have to work on every day. I think really being a good listener takes a kind of focus that's really challenging. It means pushing all other thoughts out of your head while someone's talking. It means some new behaviors to kind of assure that person that they are being heard. And we even talk to people about rethinking how they're having meetings that you could be setting up meetings in a way that is more conducive to good listening. That means being truly focused, not thinking about multiple things at once, really setting things up to show um, very obviously that hearing what people have to say is really important to you. Um, It can even mean breaking a meeting into two parts where the first part is just tell us what you think. And ending there instead of going straight to the arm wrestle and the, and the argument so that you have a better chance on, in part two of a good outcome because you truly have heard what people said and now you're going to respond that much more intelligently to what was said. We, had, um, we did this, this workshop as, as part of a swim program for one group and immediately at the, right after we did it, it was the last thing we did that day. One of the guys who was a very senior guy went off to a, a client meeting that was quite late in the in the evening and he told his 
his crew that they should just let him lead and they should not jump in and they should just, you know, leave it all in his hands. And he and it's so that they presented their idea and the CEO of the company who happened to be there um, had issues with it. And um, the guy didn't defend the idea. He just gave the uh, client space to think it through himself. And the client essentially talked himself into the idea rather than out of the idea. And it's partly when we push back too hard because we're so committed to our coming in position, it it forces them to harden their own position. It's just human nature to do that. And so by the time this guy left, um, the CEO had had thrown his arm around him at the elevator and said, you know, this is 95% sold. And the next day he came into the second half of the, the his swim program and he just said to the whole group, oh my God, it really works. And so he, <laughs> he walked out of the room, he put it into practice and it, and it worked out for him. And, and that was a you know, an exceptional situation, but, but giving people space is such a, a gift and we don't give it often enough. Yeah. We're not taught to sh- about the shut up part. <laughs> wow. What, what great life lessons there. I've been a lifelong verbal processor and probably the biggest lesson that I have that I've gotten in terms of listening was when I started taking some improv comedy classes uh, and realizing that improv is entirely based on listening and observation of what your co-creators are doing uh, because it's built off the principle of yes and. Someone makes an offer or does something and you've got to build on it and if you're not listening and observing, you can't do that, and it becomes very lopsided. And it's incredible to watch people go through that trans- that transformation or not in terms of, of success of it. And I was having a conversation with Gary Hirsch, who is an artist in Portland, uh, who's a visual artist, but he also does improv comedy and has a company called On Your Feet in which they teach improv skills to corporate to companies to help them learn to listen and learn to communicate from that perspective and so most of our conversation was about this topic and to me it's one of the most fascinating uh, unexplored areas of communication yeah it's so true in in swim we actually work with actors and improvisers as part of the program and they all all actors, whether they are um, improvisers or you know regular stage actors, they all say that their greatest skill is the ability to listen, even those you know whose lines are pre-written, because right. they always have to have their antennae on high alert in case anything goes wrong, and so that they can inhabit the character. And uh, yeah, you are so right in what you say. Yeah, we we put such a premium on it that um, we not only do a workshop where people work together on on the skill, but um, in addition to um, often including an acting experience, which which with that is a big lesson, a big takeaway from it. We've brought in people like um, Laurie Brown, who hosts a radio show. Uh, on the CBC in Canada um, and who has a long history in broadcasting as, as an interviewer of the world's biggest rock stars. <laughs> and she she says that listening skills are, uh, being a good listener, have been the most fundamental reason that she was able to draw out people who often had very little interest in showing up and doing a good interview. They, they were often... Um, very, very uh, difficult people. She said Lou Reed was the toughest of all. But she said when she would just stop talking. <laughs> if things, when the going got rough, the key to success was always to just stop talking and create that space again that people, she said, will always step into 
and it opens and simultaneously mm-hmm. in giving that space, it tends to help people open up. So it's a really interesting phenomenon. Boy, that's wonderful. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Deborah Tannen uh, as an author, and she's written several books on communi- a number of books on communication. One that was uh, kind of rocked me probably 10 or 15 years ago. Was called, I think it's called Talking 9 to 5, How Women and Men Communicate uh, Differently, essentially. Uh, but she also digs into that, uh, the whole subject of listening as well, in terms of communication, not just being passive, but actively listening yeah. uh, as a tool. Uh, so as you were talking about that, it just that just sprung to mind as well. Um, I want to slide kind of slightly into another area that you talk about as well in uh, Darling, the importance of knowing your deep desires, that we get so caught up in the current place we're in, it can, it can be fairly challenging to dream. Uh, do you want to unpack that a little bit? Nancy speaking again. Um, it is a it is a funny thing. We, we were giving a talk just last night where this exact thing came up um, in the context of a question around, you know, what's, what's a really good thing to be asking yourself um, as you go through your career? And that was the first thing that leapt to mind for me was um, to, to ask yourself with some regularity, what do I really want? And there can be a lot in the way of being ans- able to answer that question. Um, I think we have a lot of smoke in front of us around um, around that, that topic. Um, I know that when I got a personal coach years ago, that was something that was presented to me as a question, what do you really want? And I was absolutely dumbfounded by the question. Um, so I personally went through a journey where I, I looked at um, what would make me the happiest. And, and I realized I had all these I can'ts, if you will, in front of me. Wow. Well, I can't have that. That's not possible. That just can't be done. And it was my coach's job to help me see that I was telling myself a story that that generally the barrier wasn't really there, but I was I was um, preempting my own pursuit of what would make me the happiest. And it can even be a struggle to see clearly what's between you and what you really what you really want. Um, so it kind of can go in both directions. It can be hard to see what would make me happiest um, because I, I preempt even staring hard at that. And it can be hard to stare at what really is in the way in a day-to-day way because uh, it can be really hard to really look at it, look at the barriers, which can include, by the way, um, gender bias can be in the way of us having what we really want. Right. Right. That was very hard for me to see for a very, very long time, that that was really going on and around me. How so? Open that up a little bit more. Um, I'm somebody who, who I, I think I have been blessed to have really strong role models from day one, starting with my mom, um, that gender's not an issue. Uh, be strong, be assertive. Uh, and everything will work out. And and I took that to heart from day one and spoke my mind and and um, and generally felt uh, things things often went went well for me. And I had uh, I had a perception that um, when I heard stories of gender bias that it was isolated that that can't really be happening now. We've got all, all that behind us. Um, so I'm just sailing along and uh, getting the promotions and so on. But I was also um, not paid properly. <laughs> and I think gender had something to do with that. I think that, you know, um, women are more likely to just accept a lower salary. So they're not, the boss is generally not showing up, um, making sure that the women are making as much as the men because it's not an issue that's being forced it's not being pushed. So I certainly feel like that that was going on, and I didn't look at it hard. I was not looking at my own aversion to that conflict that came with um, came along with the package. 
uh, and certainly I was I was literally ignoring um, sexist comments, sexist behavior because I couldn't process it. I didn't want to process it. I didn't want to.